The Halo community has discovered new multiplayer gameplay features that I want to share with you today. Some of these features you will like and others maybe not so much. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So the Halo news again keeps on a chugging as the community keeps on a digging and reviewing the gameplay that we've seen for the multiplayer reveals. I found a couple things that seemed rather interesting. So I figured I'd share those details with you guys today. Also, I want to apologize. My voice sounds a bit off. I actually blew out my voice on Friday night from singing too hard. But I'm dedicated to the craft. You guys gotta get the news. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to see Today with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So the first thing I want to show you guys, it looks like you might be able to throw the flag on your back that is kind of a secondary weapon in some sorts. Now, take a look at this clip right here. I haven't played at 25%. Blink and you'll miss it right here, but check this out. You see the player picks up the flag, but for some reason when he goes to pick up the flag, it goes into his secondary weapon like he's holding it on his back right there for some reason. It's really tough to see because it's only like a couple frames. When you see it, it's right there, it's on his back, and then it looks like he quickly switches to the assault rifle on as a secondary weapon and holds the flag, which seems very interesting. We've never seen that before. And the reason why I think that might be carrying the flag on his back as a secondary weapon of some sorts is because of this clip right here. Now keep an eye on the lighting of the assault rifle and the top of the screen here as well. Then you'll see some red trails up at the top of the screen as this character moves backwards which if you guys saw from the previous clip that the flag has a bit of a light trail it has like two twin tails like right up here as you can see very similar to the flag but this guy has weapons out he's walking backwards throwing grenades and shooting does this indicate that we will be able to carry the flag like on our back and then also be able to fight back with like a full weaponry of our arsenal of weaponry right here for some reason now we don't see him sprinting or anything like that as it does show that we can sprint with the flag now so that's gonna be kind of an interesting tactic to see what happens with ctf but how do you throw the flag as a secondary weapon that's gonna be kind of interesting to see if you may hold it on your back and maybe you can't sprint but you have the ability to throw all your weapons and throw all your grenades and things like that that's going to be pretty interesting to see how this actually plays out within Halo's multiplayer. Maybe you move at like 80% speed or something like that, because there has to be some kind of downfall to this kind of tactic. But if you can do this, this is a game changer when it comes to capture the flag. And forget the flag, them. You just get to be a full on Spartan walking around with the flag on your back. That's kind of interesting to see if there's any some kind of equipment, some kind of perk or some kind of thing that lets you do this. Now I saw an interesting type of lighting as well on the assault rifle within this clip where the player uses the grapple shot it looks like to grab the camo towards them but the interesting thing is keep an eye on the lighting of the assault rifle in this clip as well. You'd be very shocked to see the lighting on it because first I thought it was like a skin of some sort but when you actually look at it you can see that there are bits of variation when it comes to the lighting of the inner parts of the assault rifle. I mean, there's some kind of like blue hue kind of glow to it. Now you might think, well, it's the camo, right? The camo is blue, but this is more of like a teal kind of coloring to it. So I wouldn't expect it to be like, oh, you have the overshield. You get to emit this kind of color of some sort. And this definitely is not a type of weapon skin either. As you can see how the lighting is very uneven on this. So then it makes it more, more like it's an illuminated thing onto the weapon not like actually part of the weapon itself now could this player be holding the ball as we did see that the ball itself does emit a bit of a blue type of coloring though can you backpack the ball and then be able to have the assault rifle out and shoot around as much as you want because we don't see this player sprint at all he just swaps, swaps out with the camo right there and then the clip cuts because we'll see in this clip here where this player takes out one player who has the overshield and as they pick up the overshield right here they don't emit any kind of coloring or anything like that you'll see it on their hand but that's because they've taken damage that they have this kind of aura coloring to them because once you see the shield recharge effect come into play right here then that coloring on their hand disappears they click in the overshield 
and then boom, now you're c covered in overshield right there. And you can clearly see the difference right there. And now you're emitting some kind of like yellow light now that you have it activated. So what is this player doing to emit this kind of teal coloring onto the weapon? It's a very interesting thing to point out. I'm just don't have no idea what it's actually happening within this trailer, but there's more than meets the eye on that one. Now this next clip, I want to show you two very interesting features that you'll be coming across when it comes to Halo's multiplayer. It'll be very much of a game changer kind of experience right here. So one thing I want to point out is if you look at the Spartan right here, there's a bit of a trail that follows that Spartan. This little trail right here will indicate to you that this player does have Overshield, which if you guys remember with now within Overshield of Halo Infinite, you can click it and turn it on whenever you want, which would drastically change a gunfight into the favor of the other player. But the great thing to show right here that once the player goes to kind of panic spam the Overshield on, that right before they actually go through the animation to click it on themselves, they're killed and so they still drop it, even though you see them go through the Overshield animation right there. Which I believe is the correct way to go about doing this kind of feature now within Halo Infinite that as soon as you're killed before you actually activate the items. So you don't have to deal with these people panic spamming the overshield as soon as they get into the middle of a gunfight because they didn't use the overshield properly. They should be punished for making poor decisions within the game essentially. So I'm really glad to see that 343 is doing something like this. But there's another really important aspect I want to point out from this clip itself. So this next feature I think a lot of you guys are not going to be too happy to see this but it looks like grenade hit markers are coming back within Halo Infinite's multiplayer. This kind of saddens me because I really didn't like that within Halo 4, H2A, or Halo 5. But you can see the player that we're, from a point of view, has thrown a grenade onto the Spartan. Now keep an eye, it'll be kind of blurry because there's a lot of explosions and screen shake that's happening within the scene, but keep a close eye. There's a sh so you see them hit the grenade right there, he takes a little bit of damage, you get a hit marker. Then he shoots them with the Bulldog, you see another hit marker right there, and then the grenade goes off, look around the reticle right there four little lines around the reticle, meaning that grenade hit markers are coming back within Halo Infinite. Now, I'm definitely not a fan of this feature because what grenade hit markers have led to within Halo's multiplayer experience is that people will just throw grenades to try to see if there's anybody over there and just kind of recklessly throwing them around for as kind of like a bit of an extended radar in a way or a sonar rather than actually using the grenades and a time to probably take advantage of a kill or something like that, which kind of really hurts like the stealthy aspect of the multiplayer experience. Now keep in mind this is a pre-release build and I'm sure if we get the chance to play some public flighting, 343 gets enough pushback about this kind of thing, I'm pretty sure that they'd be willing to take community feedback if it's overwhelmingly against grenade hit markers. Or maybe that's something that you can turn off within the settings. So maybe like in the competitive settings, you have grenade hit markers turned off. Or then in the more social settings, you have grenade hit markers on, which that one I can understand just because it's social. It doesn't need to be so serious. Though for me, I'm just not a fan of it. Again, you see the grenade hit the player, shoots the shot on the player, and then the grenade hit markers right there as soon as the grenade explodes right there. So it's just really something that I know a lot of people in the community are not gonna be happy about that. I'm not gonna be happy about that. But the important thing is to let the developers know now about how we feel about this kind of thing. Now we do know that the flighting process will happen later this summer. They actually mentioned that multiple flights will happen. As stated in the multiplayer development update that came with the reveal at E3, saying that we'll have more details to share down the road and Halo Insiders will be able to check it out firsthand during technical previews later this summer, meaning multiple flights, calling them technical previews. So when could we expect that flying process to happen? Well, the end of summer is in September 22nd, so sometime before then. Though we'll just have to wait until we get some concrete information. But until then, guys, I'll keep you up to date with all the Halo news. If you've been out of the loop for Halo for the last few days or so, or missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.